Deepta, you and I have known each other for a long time. I'm so fortunate to have rekindled our relationship. Pandemic is kind of winding down. Where, where are you? What are you doing? Yeah, a lot of stuff. I think one of the downsides of the things that we've done is always that we're a little too broad. Um, but a lot of it goes back to our days at Stanford, and I'm still trying to merge some of the interests of stem cells, regenerative medicine, along with vaccines and infectious disease, and trying to put a lot of these things together. And it's been actually pretty fun. I mean, in many ways, the pandemic has opened up a lot of new areas of research. Obviously, it was a you know, catastrophic event globally, um, but how we handled the response, you in particular set up the campus to do it, also created all these opportunities for us to do really cool human studies in an emerging pandemic. And so we've been plugging in a lot of the basic stuff that we've um, been learning all along and trying to see if some of those principles still hold uh, in infections and in vaccines and post-vaccination infections, and then engineering some of those things into pluripotent stem cells and trying to get cellular therapies for infectious disease. So why do you think that CAMI the Center for Advanced Molecular and Immunotherapies will be successful here? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think that from my personal standpoint, again, I'll go back to that pandemic response that you helped coordinate, you know, that you did coordinate. Um, and for me, you know, we've been, you and I have both been to, you know, around to some fantastic institutions. And I don't know what your view of it is, that Stanford had some amazing investigators, but it's very individualistic is sort of how I, how I perceived it, right? forge your own path. I think the thing that really struck me when I was in those weekly three to four, you know, daily three to four meetings yep. is how just everyone set aside their egos and they brought their expertise to sort of meld together. I have never been anywhere that has done that. I, I agree. I felt like uh, someone on the sidelines going along with the game and watching the stars do their work. And it made a huge difference. That was just like an amazing demonstration of what's possible with the culture we have here. Um, and so when you and Mike Dake started, an, you know, like came, come up with the, the vision of Cami, I was like, if we can recreate some of that magic, then yes. we're gonna be in good shape. I agree. And, and, and also we've got great partners with ASU, NAU with their microbiome work, uh, TGen. I, I think that we've got a convergence of talents here. And I'm so appreciative to uh, Governor Ducey for giving us the seed funding. And, and what's the return on investment? Because I think that's a really important part. I mean, the state and Governor Ducey have put in a lot of money into this. And so I think it's important to talk about, well, all right, what are we gonna get out of this? What's, what are the taxpayers gonna get out of this? And so I think, you know, one of the key things that I perceive that actually allows us to be, you know, distinguish ourselves a little bit from other um, institutions that are doing similar-ish things um, is really the focus on one of the things you said, which is entrepreneurship you know, at, at within the state of Arizona. There's a culture of mm -hmm. that here. Um, and so, you know, every institution that has set up, uh, you know, a, an immune health center has different priorities and things that they're wanting to get out of it. Stanford is honestly primarily driven by, to, you know, used to drive basic research. Uh, UPenn is try doing it to help physicians um, make clinical decisions. And all of those are part of it, for sure. Um, but I think a big part of what we're trying to do and set up CAMI to do is to be able to take basic discoveries, take them through to the point where they can launch new startup companies, create new jobs, and then eventually create new therapies that are all being generated here in the state of Arizona. Right. And so we've had consulting groups that have done some um, cost benefit analyses for us. And you know, they're, they're thinking something like around two and a half to one return on investment, which is pretty much in line with, with generally speaking what federal funding of biomedical research has been shown to do. So this will come back and this center will pay for itself and then some. What's the, what's the plan? When will this all uh, really break ground and, and get going? Right now, um, you know, we have designs on the building. Um, it'll be somewhere around 300,000 square feet in the Phoenix Bioscience Center. Which, which is, is a big building. It's a big building. And, and what's nice about it being there is it's also surrounded by some of our partner and sister institutions in, this, in, this, in the state. As you say, ASU is nearby, there's hospitals nearby. So it's a really nice hub for doing biomedical science research. Right now we have committees in place to search for the executive director, um, program committees to make sure that we have the capabilities in place to do the things that we need to do without necessarily pigeonholing the, the executive director. And um, we have infrastructure uh, group as well to basically make sure that that building has all of the right capabilities, again, 
uh, to do the things that we expect the new center to do. Well, uh, that's fantastic. Dr. Dita Bhattacharya, thank you so much for your time today, for joining me and for bringing your talents back home to Tucson. And I think we definitely should do a podcast together. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm in.